Hi, I'm Danny Swass Cousins and welcome to a very special series of your 4x4. I'm Simon Christie. Now it's taken a huge amount of planning and preparation, but I think we're finally ready for one of Australia's most iconic four-wheel drive trips. We're heading for the Simpson Desert. Now there are a couple of last minute checks that we need to make and we do have to catch up with the sponsors, but I'm really looking forward to this series because the whole 10 weeks will be dedicated to this crossing. All right, Danny, do you think we've got enough gear? Do you think we're ready to go? Yes, Simon, I reckon we're good to go, yeah. Do we have enough fuel? We've definitely got enough fuel. Do we have enough food? The food, haven't you seen the food? It's in the fridges and all stacked in the car. We've got heaps. Did you remember to pack Shay? I've got Shay in the car and I've got the coffee, so I'll be set. Your 4x4 is proudly presented by Berrima Diesel, ARB 4x4 Accessories, Piranha Off-Road Products, Kamer Rear End Protection, Wholesale Automatic Transmissions and Lightforce Performance Lighting. This is one of those really iconic trips that people dream about. I mean, Cape York and the Simpson Desert are two things that people aspire to do all their lives. These trips are amazing. From William Creek we headed along the Oondadatta track. It's really worth giving yourself plenty of time to stop at some of the old ruins. Even though we're really in the desert, there is still water around. We're well and truly into the Simpson Desert. And the dunes this morning have been nothing but spectacular. Blue skies every day, clear dark, starry nights. And the fire was pretty sensational. One of the highlights for all of us today was actually seeing some camels. The Milky Way I don't think is anywhere brighter. This is the mother of all dunes out here in the Simpson. This is big red. It was like a sea or a lake of dust. But to go back to the beginning, our day started off at about 10 o'clock this morning. Well, this ring has probably got double the power. <laughs> G'day, I'm Andrew from Berrima Diesel Service. What a day we've had. We started down in South Australia at Barmera this morning and not long into the trip we came across a ferry, got across the river. Well, the mighty Murray River by ferry. This is beautiful. G'day, I'm Jason from Lightforce Australia. When we left Burra yesterday, we headed up through the back roads and found it to be very green and quite lush considering this time of year. Quite nice to see a lot of the growth that's come through there because of all the rains we've had this summer. We met up yesterday with the boys at Barmera and headed through to Burra. The preparation for this is huge, it's significant. We're in the desert for two weeks. We're thousands of kilometres away from nowhere. There is no support if anything goes wrong. And we've got people brought their families and young kids, like Danny's got little Shay with him and there's other people with their kids. This is a really big commitment to do this. And to get this ready for this has been a lot of preparation. So that's everything from wheels, tyres, suspension, obviously long range fuel tanks, dual battery systems for running fridges. It's been a great trip. The backdrop has probably been the Flinders most of the way. It looks like there's been a little bit of rain out here. There was a lot of greenery on some of the farms or on the foothills of a lot of the mountains. But when we pulled up for fuel today, one of the girls said they hadn't had rain for about three months. So it's still pretty dry, but to us it's all looking pretty good at the moment. Well, the car's been tuned to run on 98 octane fuel and unfortunately we don't always get premium unloaded fuel in the bush so we run an octane booster and we'll all be good. Got a fair few k's under the belt which we needed to which most of us do when we travel around Australia. 
the coming days will certainly be a little bit shorter and a little bit more time up our sleeve to get up to some fun. We headed off, and I guess a lot of it's Bitumen Road, but the scenery that you see coming over this direction is amazing. It starts off with basically just sort of farmland and just very flat, uninteresting territory. And after a little while, it turns into this incredible sort of country. So you've got the Flinders Ranges on the right-hand side, you've got the ruins of the old railway lines and all the old buildings. And then you've got this incredible country that looks like Roadrunner cartoon type stuff with all these mountains and escarpments that are cut away by the wind. It's absolutely spectacular. Hi guys, David Brickhill from Kmart 4 Drive. Well, here we are once again, we're finally on the big trip. Came from Barama this morning. We've made our way to Farina Ruins, which is just an absolutely spectacular place to come and see. Fantastic campground with toilets, a bit of a lookout and a nice grassed area. The word farina means flour, I've been told, in Latin, which is basically because of what this place was all about. It's where they had bakeries and used to bake bread and sell flour and stuff to the early explorers who were heading into this country. Now the trip really starts. Tomorrow we're off to William Creek. It's a really good time. We're finally out here. We've all got ourselves together. It's two weeks away, so it's a big commitment from all the companies to come on up here. But this is what it's all about, and this is why we're here. So we're really looking forward to the rest of the trip. Well, viewers, here we are kicking back, taking it nice and easy at the Farina campground. I've got some butter chicken. We're doing it in luxury. Now we've had a beautiful day, we've covered 600 kilometres travelling up along the Flinders Ranges, absolutely awesome. We've got a nice easy day to tomorrow, but for now let's cross over to Danny for the Love Your 4x4 email competition. Well Simon, our entry this week comes from Clint McPherson, and Clint has written, I love my 4x4 for the great escapes it gets the family to, as well as the thrills there and along the way. Thanks for sending in that email. You've won yourself a Light Force Tack Torch and Stubby Holder. And you're also in the running for the ARB Twin Motor Portable Compressor. For full details, visit the Your 4x4 website. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three ton towing and the awesome 470 Newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. Does your diesel smoke, lack power, or have poor fuel economy? Then you need the Berrima Diesel Treatment. Fine tuning diesels since 1956, the Berrima Diesel Technicians are Australia's leading diesel wizards. From a turbo installation to a high tech dyno tune, when you think diesel, think Berrima Diesel. Visit thedieselexperts.com and make an appointment for more power, more torque, and better fuel economy. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions.
All right, a little bit of bad news. We're only one day into the adventure and Danny's car's got some problems. We're suffering with a little bit of whining coming from the transfer case, the diff, we're not sure. Now we've got the experts on board and that's the fantastic thing about traveling with so many well-trained, experienced four-wheel drivers. We've got experts here who can help out. Now we've done some testing this morning. We've located it down to the rear diff. Probably a problem with the drive shaft being slightly too long. That should just fall off. It's supposed to have hit us in the head by now. So that's like all the way up. I know, that's probably what's half the problem. It could have like loaded it's up the probably, bearing. It's probably loaded up the pinion. Anyway, we'll find out in a minute. Ah! Gotcha. I reckon our theory is when this shaft's been made up, yep. it's too, it's too they've long. made it too long because what's supposed to happen, that's supposed to slide. Yeah. See that like that? Yep. That's supposed to be a load shorter. It should have like 25, 30 mil there. Well, it should have, yeah, Minimum. 20 mil at least. Now it's important when you're travelling out in these areas that you carry a tool set that has a socket big enough to do the pinion nuts, the bearings etc on these vehicles and we do have that. So I reckon if we can shorten up the shaft so it doesn't crash, um, stick it back in, that's it, that's all we can do. Now I've also got one of the guys travelling with us is carrying some fantastic power tools and we've actually got an angle grinder and we're going to look at cutting down part of the drive shaft, adjusting the splines so we can get a little bit of extra travel. Now it is definitely a bush fix. We need to get this fixed properly, but it will certainly get us back on the road and keep us wheeling. All right, let's chuck a couple of bolts in it. We're feeling slightly confident. There's a definite possibility for maybe this will be all right. Yes. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. Oh. Today we're looking forward to spending some time looking around at the ruins. Really enjoying being back with the boys from your 4x4 again. I'm looking forward to a couple of weeks of fantastic trip through the Simpson Desert. That's sensational. The fact that 300 people used to live here, it's just amazing. It's an amazing place. It's one of, I suppose, a few few places you can still come to where you can see where pioneers of our country sort of started and how hard they lived. I just can't believe that they have that sort of amount of people living here at the, at the one time in such a desolate and harsh environment. It just makes it realise how hardy they were back in those days. Gay I'm Stuart from Hulse Automatics. Pretty fascinating place. One of those places that you wouldn't normally go to unless you had a map that showed it, certainly worth visiting. Fascinating old place where once was a thriving metropolis till the train line came through and that pretty much spelled the end of it. You will, see you in a couple of days. Absolutely. See you guys. Okay, look left and right. Well, it's a very easy run from Farina to Maree. Really surprising how many little stops there are along the way. There's certainly so far been no problems with fuel, food and rest spots. Now the bad news is that we've lost Danny along the way. Unfortunately, that diff problem was worse than we expected. And the best plan was to send Danny home, hopefully get that fixed. And we're planning, fingers crossed, that Danny's gonna catch up with us at Birdsville. Well, from here, we're heading towards William Creek. We're just stopping for a short lunch break, and Mari is a great place for that. You've got food, fuel, and plenty to see. G'day. <laughs> 
Guys, this is a Commonwealth Railways GAN railway engine. It's a diesel electric, a dirty great big six cylinder air cooled. It's absolutely massive. 500 odd amps, it produces at the generator. We just found the plaque off it. Not a circuit board, not a transistor, not a diode in sight. It's all done mechanically. It's fantastic. This thing was probably running up to probably the 1960s, I'd imagine. And here it is, a piece of technology from the past, still intact and all in one piece, and it's not even vandalised. OK, you're going to take us for a trip? Uh -huh. OK, pull the lever. Switch. Go, John. That's it. Turn the knobs. Oh, what about these ones? Look here, look. What? You can turn those ones. Yeah. There's the master switch on and off. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, turn it on. Hi, I'm Matt Frost from ARB. Well folks, that's the end of the bitumen. We've driven up this morning from Farina Station and here we are in Maori. Now this is a pretty famous town. It's the starting point for two very well-known tracks into the outback. We've got the Birdsville track heading this way and we're right here at the start of the Unidata track, which is where we're going this afternoon. Next up, it's the Ask an Expert segment. Thanks Simon. Well the question for the experts this week comes from Kelly Miller and Kelly wants to know how easy is it to fit a turbocharger to a non-turbo diesel engine? Now I'm sure the expert for this one is Reinhard Leimroth from Berrima Diesel. A lot of people worry about turbocharging diesels and it's really it's an old worry for nothing. A diesel engine should be turbocharged. It frees up the engine, it runs it cleaner, the engine is asthmatic so we want to get air into it and it makes them last actually longer. Turbocharger enhances the life of the engine. We still do lots of fitting today. People often worry about it. I always say, do not worry about it. They do not play up. They don't run hot. If they're installed properly, the installing and the tuning is the vital thing. They're going to be tuned correctly. Air fuel ratio is vital. People, you know, fit often turbochargers and uh, they're overfueled, they have a heat problem. It's the wrong setup. If it's done correctly, you have no issue at all. It really is one of these things, when we fit them, we can sleep, we don't have to worry about it. So anyhow, it enhances the vehicle, it's, I could see today on these very steep hills and inclines there, it's effortless, you know, you don't have to touch the throttle heavy, it just wants to go somewhere, they need air. So the diesel engine likes air, that's why they're all turbocharged today. For asking that question, you've won yourself a Piranha diff breather. You're also in the running for the wholesale heavy duty valve body converter lockup and temperature gauge kit. The Light Force 50 watt 170 mm striker driving lamp kit and the RFI antenna pack. For full details, visit the Your 4x4 website. Thirty second kitchen, a kitchen in thirty seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker, kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here, retrieve the R clip, lock on here, R clip in, leg here, leg here, pull them together, stove, billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. Sometimes the front runners lead from behind, and when it comes to protecting your rear, Kmart are world leaders in rear end protection and tow bar combinations. The just released Prado 150 is no exception, with a bar that is designed to follow the car's lines and work with your sensors and factory camera. For the best in rear end protection, trust Kmart. It's a statement, not just an accessory, but the toughest of 4x4 trips. For more info, go to kmart.com.au. Warning, beware of imitation lights. Only Light Force Performance Lighting guarantees Australian made, no leaking or melting, quality output and three year warranty. Unlike their imitators, Light Force lights feature peerless construction, leak proof seals, impact proof lenses and filters, vibration and fracture resistant mounts and housing, and stainless steel fittings, outshining and outlasting their impersonators in every way. Often imitated, never replicated. Visit lightforce.com for the full range of authentic Light Force lights. Got a tough 4x4 tourer and enjoy hitting the tracks? Odds are you'll need some serious underguard protection and a heavy duty long range tank. Brown Davis Automotive offer aluminised steel underguard protection plates and long range tanks for most popular makes and models. They're designed and developed right here in Australia and have been tested to the extreme right across this great country. 
Remember Brown Davis Automotive. It's a trusted and family-owned Aussie business and proud manufacturers of high-end tanks, underguards and more. This week's first entry is this tough-looking F250. This shot was taken on top of Big Red after crossing the Simpson Desert. This 40 series was originally bought for parts, but it was too good to wreck. It's now decked out for some great outback trips. Next is this tidy looking Discovery 4, enjoying a trip out to one of the stunning beaches at Esperance in Western Australia. This well set up Prado has done many family trips. This shot was taken while on a recent break to Kangaroo Island. Our last entry for the week is this Holden Colorado, snapped at the end of an adventure through the Gippsland area in Victoria. If you've just seen your photo and you're the first person to email Danny, you've won yourself the projector, 6 metre, 750 amp booster cables. You're also in the running for a Berrimah Diesel DP chip, the best way to boost diesel power, and the Travel Buddy Oven, the easy option for hot food when you're in the bush. The Union Data Track is an excellent road. I mean, certainly when it's nice and dry like this, it's a fantastic road. You can sort of cruise at high speeds very, very easily. The thing you do have to watch out for is punches. It's basically dirt the whole way through the Union Data Track, and punches are certainly fairly common, particularly for people running road tyres and things like that. So a very good way to minimise the likelihood of damaging the tyre through puncturing it is to drop the air pressures down. So we've got about 30 psi in the Hilux here now. I had 40 this morning on the bitumen, but we've dropped it down by about 10 pounds, and that will certainly reduce the likelihood of getting a punch on the tyre. And then the other thing you find is with slightly lower pressures, it certainly improves the ride on these rough surfaces as well. G'day, it's Jason from Light Force Australia. And David from Kmart in Victoria. <laughs> South Australia. You, got, you don't want to know where you are? Well, it's Light Force Australia. Oh, <laughs> we'll start again. The view about the Unit Data Track is it follows the GAN railway lines, and we went through the dog fence earlier on today. Last year when we did a trip up the channel country up through here, we couldn't get over this side because of the flooding and all that sort of stuff. Couldn't even do the desert last year because of the flooding. So being able to get into the Simpson this year, I think it'll be fantastic. Yeah. Especially with a lot of flowers around, which is really good as well. So it's just an amazing place. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing some of the wildlife, both flora and fauna that are up this neck of the woods. Being a bit of a man of the outback, very keen to see what's going on up at this neck of the woods. Aren't you known as Outback Jace? <laughs> Not Man quite. of the Outback. Yes. That's impressive. Yeah, not quite with the word I wanted, but... No. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. The moment where we're sitting is Lake Eyre South, so we're just south of the main body of water itself, but it's still an amazing body of water that we do have sitting behind us. I've got to tell you, it's an amazing scene. I Fantastic, mean, Andrew, it? look at that, will you? Where's our uh, sailboard? Yes, <laughs> yes. But no, this lake's huge, it's absolutely massive. It's like an inland sea. I mean, you can imagine why the early explorers thought when they found it, this was... This was the edge of the ocean, yeah, wasn't it? When the you edge, the, the edge of it. Mm. Now, this is a pretty special time to be at Lake Eyre. As you can see behind us here, there's a significant amount of water in the lake, which is a very, very rare sight to see. So we're feeling really quite privileged, aren't we, Stuart? Certainly are. Pretty spectacular place. It's a beautiful day as well. And there's plenty of water in here. Some of the other guys have had four or five trips through here over the last 15 or so years. 
and they've never been able to see Lake Eyre in this sort of flood. So we're very privileged to be here at the present moment and see such a span of water so full. It's a great place to be. Look, the trip was great coming up here. We're really in an outback environment now. You wouldn't call the moonscape. It's probably looking good compared to what it has been in dry years. But yes. um, yeah, it's an amazing countryside. Pretty much from there on, you've got everything from the engine to the bits of track, there's bridges. Many years ago when we did this, we were actually looking for the old pickets that used to hold down the lines, and we still found some of those, which is pretty incredible. So guys, if you get a chance to come up, have a look at this, this is incredible, it really, really is. There's scenic flights, there's helicopter flights, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. It's a shame we had to rush up here, really, because there's so much history at the side of the road. I mean, you follow the old Garn Railway up here and look at some of the railway sidings. I mean, there was the water tank we passed, some of the old ruins, and you could really spend a few days just driving up this Unidata track and sort of getting out on foot and just exploring some of the history in the area. Yeah, the Gant is a real interesting story in itself. It sort of brings back memories for me, because I remember as a kid, when my parents first moved to Alice Springs in the 70s, we actually caught that train. And I remember getting off the train in this strange town that we hadn't ever been to before, and that's where I lived for the next 10 years. That train doesn't even go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking forward to getting up to the William Creek Hotel tonight. That's a pretty special place as well. I was first in William Creek in 1993, so we're almost 20 years later, and I bet it hasn't changed a bit. That's one of those pubs that doesn't seem to matter how many times you go there, it still retains that character, and looking forward to a good night there. You know, nothing changes out of here apart from the water or lack of it. Got into William Creek at a beautiful time in the afternoon. We were able to all set up camp in the daylight, which was really good. And then a few people were able to have showers and freshen up a little bit again after being sitting in the cars for a couple of days. Well, it's been a great day of driving today. We headed out of Farina, we've headed up onto the Udnadatta track, and we're now landed in William Creek, where we're looking forward to a very relaxing night. We've got to set up camp before we settle in and get dinner at the pub. Make sure you tune in next week when we head up to Udnadatta and onto Mount Deer, continuing our adventure as we head for the Simpson Desert. I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.